They talk about hope. The wings of hope. Kind of poetic. Those wings really are the and. That's what allows you to open up. That's what allows you to soar. Let's go. Let those wings in the, the and uh, raise hope. Not for the planet right now. We'll get to that later. But for you. It's so simple in a way. It's simply acknowledging that there's not just one you. There's many yous. There's not just one way of feeling. There's many ways of feeling. And you can do it all together at the same time. You can have multiple. You can feel good and bad at the same time. How about that? You can be rich and poor at the same time. And you could say, no, I'd rather really be wealthy and done with poor. It doesn't mean poor goes away. Poor stays there as a potential. But you don't have to go through that door anymore. Your light body. Some of you have been doing weird things trying to get that light body in. I mean, I've seen some really strange things. I mean... Uh, roosters are supposed to crow at the sun in the morning, not humans. And I've seen some of you do things like that. The light body is here. It's the end. It's a reality that is present. Your long path of hardships from lifetimes ago, this lifetime of the hardships, you wonder when you'll ever, ever get over them, go beyond them. Oh, and you've, you've dragged so much with you. We well, and it. You don't try to get rid of the hardships. You simply and it, meaning that there are hardships and there's not. But then what you find yourself is gravitating to the one that serves you best. That's all you were doing with your hardship scenario, your hardship reality. You thought it served you best. You thought it, I don't know, kept you in line or made you a better being or you had to carry the cross right there along with Yeshua, whatever it was. It was serving you. And now, perhaps you don't need it. The beauty is here. We're not trying to get rid of one scenario for another. We're anding it. And then there'll be a natural attraction to one or the other, but the other one doesn't go away. It's still there. The life of hardships is still there. It might be like a old suit at the back of the closet. You never pull it out. You never wear it. It doesn't even fit anymore. But it's still there in case you ever want to go back. That's the and. It's not trying to fight off um, things like low energy. I'm trying to take uh, all sorts of super supplements and do all sorts of other weird things that I've seen Chamber do to uh, now be more energized. Because it's the end. You, you are low energy and you have very vital, uh, vitality-filled energy, joyful energy. It's the both. You, you don't wish for it. You don't hope for it. You don't aspire to it. You simply and it. In other words, you acknowledge it. You are conscious and aware of it. It's always been there. But suddenly, you open your eyes to it. And I love it because it's not just uh, trying to move from place A to place B or D or C or whatever. It's A, B, C, and D all together. It's the and. It's almost like a game now. Which one do I choose? Well, 
do I do I play myself in the C role today, or do I play it in the B role, or do I combine them and play all of them? That's that's true sovereignty. And that is the wings of hope, and that's what makes it possible to get into this world that Jamie describes just 20 years away. It's not wishful thinking. It's not uh, you know, finding some sort of uh, genie in a bottle to make it so. It's anding it, letting it be, letting yourself be aware. Because when you're aware that that potential is there, that Jamie talked about, well, it's a potential. It's very real, and it can be realized. So, dear Shamber, take a look at how you're going to end your life. Not end your life. Be very careful here. No typos. And your life. A N D. Or you can use the. Uh, uh, the combination A and E together, uh, ligature. So it's kind of A E together N D. It doesn't matter. It's the whole concept of anding. You're no longer stuck in a in a in a lifestyle where you don't have a nice house or you can't drive a nice car. You can and it. And remember, be very careful. It's not replacing one for another. It's not trying to annihilate your. Uh, reality of a shitty house and a crappy, broken-down car. You're anding it. That way, it allows you to be conscious of all of your potential. It allows you to be conscious of, yes, there was that reality with crappy house. But there's also the reality of the house of your dreams. So don't try to just transpose one for the other. Shift from uh, unhealthy to healthy. Realize the and. and. Do this consciously every day. Ten times, a hundred times, a thousand times a day, into everything. Even if you if you've got a nice house, and it, and realize there's also the potential of a crappy house, and then feel which one you're actually attracted to. Which one you want to manifest. In, in your house, in your beingness, there are many mansions. There are many dimensions. It's not about just choosing one or the other. It's about being aware of all, of all. And then, which one do you want to realize, or which ones do you want to realize? You're not just a woman or a man. You're Anne. You're both, and then you're neither. And then you can be one or the other, and it can all be simultaneous. This is the way of reality and energy and consciousness. And while some might say, well, that sounds pretty damn confusing, I just I want to pick one or the other. No, it's not. That's not natural. It's natural to realize that they're all there. And you can select one, but still realize that others are still there. You can select many, or some, or whatever. And that's that is about true creatorship and sovereignty. We move into the and now, full on, full force. And we don't move into the and. And this isn't a, a Zen uh, mind game. This is reality. You are a man, or you're a woman, and you're both, or you're none. You see the freedom it gives you. And if you're if you're sitting here as a woman, that you realize I am also a man. Doesn't mean you need to get up in the morning and shave, but it means that there is that potential, and you can be both at once or none. I'm neither of them. I don't need that definition anymore. I'm old and I'm young. You see, you're starting to get the point now. You are all things. Now, which one do you want to live? 
Which one do you want to bring in reality? Which ones do you want to bring into reality? This is all about recognizing potentials. This is all about 2044. Where will you be? Will you be in one or more of the ands? Will you be in the reality of that Jamie's in with the, the beauty and the ease of life? Or stay in the reality where there's still hardship and wars, famine and drought, or both or none? This is what a master can do. This is what a truly what Merlin does. This is what a, a master masters. Let's take a deep breath together as we go into the end of everything. It's what opens the pathways into that reality that may seem far-fetched right now, the reality of Jamie in 2044, but it opens the pathways. It's not something that is uh, statistically uh, accurate. It's not something that is a high probability, but that doesn't matter when you're in the end. It simply doesn't matter. There are no statistics, and everything is a statistic. Let's take a deep breath together into the and. The and, it's the wings of hope. It allows us to soar beyond probabilities and into the highest potentials. Some would call it magic. To me, it's just plain good physics. With that, dear Shambra, I'm off. Time for you to really feel into the end of things. And I'm going to be coming around. I'm going to be more active than ever. And I've uh, also uh, solicited Kathumi to help remind you constantly. You're going to be hearing and, and reminding you you're not stuck. With that, dear Shambra, I am Adamus and St. Germain, and you. Thank you. <laughs>